This is Lucky's dark and strange obsession. The story actually gets kind of crazy and there's a lot of facets of it, but basically it's been more than 10 years since Lucky dropped his debut project, Alternative Trap. The crazy part is most Lucky fans didn't even start listening to him until I don't know, Flawless Like Me in 2022. Me personally, I started listening to Lucky in 2019. Arguably his best year, Free Wave 3, Days Before 3. But yeah, I was there midnight when Days Before 3 dropped. My boy, my friend at the time put me on. I was driving back from Miami, listening to the album, and I was just captured by, you know, the lyrical essence of one of the best modern rappers of our time. I heard of him before, obviously, from like little Tracy features and stuff. Like, uh, what was that, percent, percent, percent? but I never really checked his music all out until 2019. So um, with so many of the fans joining the train as of recently, there's been lots of music left in the past. Um, one such example is Son of Sam, which is what I'm gonna be going over today um, for the first part of this video. And this project isn't on platforms, which is probably why a lot of the more mainstream fans haven't heard of it. This was like a seven song little project that dropped on March 23rd of 2016. It was also his first release under the name Lucky. He used to go by the name Lucky X, like E-C-K dollar sign, but he dropped that moniker. And the album Son of Sam is named after the American serial killer David Berkowitz, who was also known as the Son of Sam. This was like a huge case back in the day. Like if you ask your parents about it, they've definitely heard of it. Berkowitz pled guilty to perpetrating eight shootings in New York City between July of 1976 and July of 1977, which resulted in six fatalities. And honestly, only being able to kill six people in eight shootings, like that low key seems like a bit of a um, low success rate if you ask me, but maybe that's why he was able to get away with it for so long. But what made his killing so famous were the notes he would leave behind each murder, kind of mocking police, promising future crimes, and the media would cover these extensively. And Lucky even used one of these notes as the cover of the Son of Sam album. I say goodbye and goodnight. Police, let me haunt you with these words. I'll be back, I'll be back. To be, interest, to be interpreted as bang, 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 bank, bang, uh, yours in murder, Mr. Monster. Then in a letter to Jimmy Breslin, a Daily News columnist, he wrote, P.S. J.B., please inform all the detectives working the case that I wish them the best of luck. Keep them digging. Drive on. Think positive. Get off your butts. Knock on coffins, etc. Upon my capture, I promise to buy all the guys working on the case a new pair of shoes if I can get up the money. Son of Sam. And then in the bottom right, he put all, like, all those like gender symbols. But then we have the scariest one in my opinion, which is this. I am deeply hurt by your calling me a Wemon hater. I am not, but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. I'm a little brat. When Father Sam gets drunk, he gets mean. He beats his family. Sometimes he ties me up to the back of the house. Other times he locks me in the garage. Sam loves to drink blood. Go out and kill, commands Father Sam. Behind our house, some rest. Mostly young, graped, and slaughtered. Their blood drained, just bones now. Papa Sam keeps me locked in the attic too. I can't get out, but I look out the attic window and watch the world go by. I feel like an outsider. I am on a different wavelength than everybody. And given the context of these killings, the this note makes a bit more sense as it's actually from the perspective of the neighbor's dog. So the dude who wrote that letter was kind of saying it as if he was his neighbor's dog. And um, here's a clip of Lucky actually trying to explain the reasoning behind the murders. He's a little under the influence though. So I'm gonna play the clip and then afterwards I'm gonna give you a more thorough explanation, don't worry. Let me tell you the whole concept of Sam. In the first place, we'll talk about the first place. Sam was David Berkowitz's neighbor. Apparently David Berkowitz was a psychopath. So David Berkowitz's neighbor, Sam, named Carr. His name was Sam Carr. He had a dog that barked all night. The, the, the dog name was Harvey. It barked all, all night. So he couldn't get no sleep. So you know, as a psychopath, like at night, he keep thinking that. So I guess, like, apparently, he um he fucking like he like he would say. So like he would say, when the dog is barking, like like when Harvey barking at night, like that's Sam telling Harvey, like that, that's that, that, that's that, 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 um David said demons were speaking to him through the dog. So that was so, when the dog was barking, that's what the demon was speaking to. Okay, so what Lucky was trying to say was this. Um, Berkowitz had a neighbor named Sam, who owned a black dog named Harvey. And Berkowitz claimed that this dog was possessed by Satan. 
and had been giving him orders to commit these atrocities, sending him messages of like who to kill. Um, in the same Lyrical Lemonade interview, Lucky said that people thought he was glorifying a serial killer through this album, when in reality he was just drawing comparisons and creating a metaphor to his own life. People think I'm glorifying a serial killer is like his demons, like vices are demons, my demons, my, these bitches, I mean, I, me being fucking speaking on Rick James, um, like his fast life, like drugs, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's like that's like that's like comparison to it. That's like that's my little comparison to it. It's like I, I'm not idolizing him, but like like he like he was right. Like his letters, it was so like like his letters were so like they were like the way he was putting it. Like I'll be back, I'll be back. Like he put he really put a fear in their heart, and it really he was just it was just senseless. And it's like that's what I'm doing. Like people people hate me because I promote. I promote, I promote drug music and like his, 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 his he said I'm on a different wavelength than everybody like you feel me like 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 his, his letter like he said I hate that y'all think I, I, I hate I hate women I just Sam just want me to do evil Sam just want me to Sam just want me to develop the youth of the drug music and the darkness but that's not me in my case I'm saying Sam is In the same interview, Lucky also said this. Earl um, Fletcher is going to be on his own. It's going to drop this week. So yeah, according to Lucky, Earl Sweatshirt was actually supposed to be on the song, His Only, but never ended up being on the project due to unknown reasons. We did get the Earl collab eventually though in 2019. Um, we didn't get Earl rapping, but he produced on Lucky's Free Wave 3 on the track All In. He's credited as a main artist on the track for some reason, but he just made the beat. Lucky, prod by me, real gas, come shop. It's interesting though, because Lucky's obsession with killers and crime doesn't just stop there, so... Let's take a look at his first ever album cover for Alternative Trap. Um, the man pictured is Lucky Luciano, an Italian-born gangster who gained power in the United States, running the largest bootlegging operation in New York by 1925. And this was during the Prohibition, meaning that alcohol was illegal and had to be imported from out of the country, such as... Scotland, the Caribbean, Canada, and more. And yeah, this dude was a pretty bad guy, even sentenced to 50 years in jail. He never ended up serving the time, but that's besides the point. And Lucky has a clear interest in crime and criminals, especially considering that he is one himself. Lucky. So 2015 seemed to be a pretty criminal year for these rappers. And it was no different for Lucky, who was arrested in July of that year. Lucky, who was 19 at the time, was charged with one count of felony robbery and two counts of battery after allegedly admitting to robbing a 28-year-old man on the 7500 block. On July 13th, around midnight, Lucky reportedly approached the man and asked for a cigarette. When the victim agreed and pulled his wallet out of his pocket to get to the cigarettes, Lucky grabbed it and ran. The victim, who was just 5'4 and 125 pounds, gave chase and eventually pinned down the 6-foot, 160 pound Lucky in the backyard of a residence, but not before Lucky could get a few punches in on his face. When the police arrived, the victim was bleeding from his mouth and nose and had a swollen left eye. But while Lucky was able to get a few hits in, he still has to live with the fact that he got taken down by someone 8 inches shorter and 40 pounds lighter than him, probably Mexican. But speaking of Lucky mugshots, here's a Lucky mug you might be interested in. So yeah, just these album covers aren't the only thing and I mean, alternative traps from 11 years ago. Son of Sam is from like eight years ago, and it shows like a, a very clear pattern of, uh, of this criminal interest. And there's also song titles like Crime Pays and lyrics like, I don't like jail, so don't overdose on what you get from me. Um, it's pretty clear that Lucky is criminally inclined, you know, it's what he finds interest in. But I do think he's gotten past that stage in his life. He doesn't like rap about it very much anymore, focusing more on flexing lyrics, substances, designer clothes, all that. SMD and Flawless Like Me were a definite departure from those lyrical themes, and it'll be interesting to see how his upcoming album Gemini will play out. Um, the project will be dropping soon, and Lucky has confirmed a few things about it so far. So the NFR podcast tweeted this, Lucky, Gemini, 18 tracks, June 14th. Known features include V's and Rilo Rodriguez. 
And Lucky actually replied to this tweet saying, it's more than 18 tracks and more features than that. And this is interesting for a few reasons. We're gonna go over them now. Uh, firstly, the album length. So the track list will probably be 20 songs plus, similar to FLM. And this is personally not what I'm into. I like shorter, more concise albums, but I guess this means I do have uh, more of a chance to find songs that I really like. I'm definitely gonna be listening to the whole album multiple times. Um, we also have features, which Lucky does not do very often. And he confirmed here that there are minimum three features on the album, probably more. And that's more than his last two albums put together. And he's never been known for doing lots of features, so I'm interested to see what artists he gets on the album. He already confirmed V's and Bala Rodriguez. We're probably gonna have Babyface Ray on there. 42 Doug, I don't know. He had Future on Flawless Like Me, so there could be like a, a big artist on there too, who knows. Another telling part is that Lucky did not dispute the date, June 14th, which means the album will mostly likely be dropping on that date. And um, I'm excited to see how the album turns out because he has been talking about it for a few near, for a few years now. I think it'll be one of his uh, better projects just because of like how long he's been teasing it. And um, I guess unfortunately nothing will ever top days before three, that's like, peak music but a man can always wish but yeah what are your guys uh thoughts on this are you excited for the album let me know in the comments and thank you for watching peace